Good evening, everybody. Good evening. My, name is, my name is Jack. I'm from uh, Hawaiian Toastmaster. I'm the vice president there and past president. Uh, I lived in Canada most of my life. So tonight, at the end of my uh, evaluation, I'm going to touch upon a bit of pronunciation. I think that's the biggest task for most of you non-native speakers. Now, tonight, it was a, I think it was a great meeting. You had like 40, 45 people here tonight for a demo meeting, for first meeting of the semester. Well done. Uh, TME, Leslie, great job. Good time management. You kept all the session within the time frame, and that's important. Because once you go over time, you're going to run into a lot of trouble. So that's really good managing time. And also, I would suggest when you introduce a speaker or evaluator or session master, introduce the person. Give us a little more background about that person. Who she is, what she does, what does she major in, so forth. So you need to do a little bit of research before the session starts. So to check with that person if you're not familiar with him or her or as a guest. So give us a bit of background of that person. Timer, Michelle, excellent job. And our counter, same thing. I think you've done it before. This is not your first time, right? It's my first time. Oh, really? Wow, excellent. Awesome, that's wonderful. And uh, yeah, it's important to have those two people here. And they keep everybody in check, especially with the R counter. That's important because it really picks up a lot of your word films. A lot of time when you come up here, we don't know what to say, say, ah, uh, ah, uh, you know. And that's important because that really helps you to improve, to become a better speaker. Now, the three speakers we have tonight are all experienced speakers. Because the first one is scene number three. That's the third speech by Yvonne. And your voice is very good, loud and clear, everybody. I sat at the back there and I could hear you. That was really good. Good body language, good eye contact, good posture. My only suggestion is to learn to slow down a little bit and pause between sentences. Otherwise, you sound winded. All right? So take your time. Don't rush yourself. In fact, I always suggest to people to slow down by 50% of your normal speed when you speak. Why? Because if you are up here doing a five minute speech and you slow it down by 50%, you only need to deliver two and a half minute material. <laughs> yes, it's true. You don't have to spend so much time working on your speech. You make it much shorter. Also, when you speak a little slower, it allows you to pronounce your words better become clear so people can understand a little bit better. We don't need to rush when we speak. Even in a regular conversation, say each syllable at a time. Once you practice that and you become more efficient with the language, then you can speed it up a little bit. But you never have to speak in a hurry, unless you're in a hurry. Tonight we're not. We've got two hours here. Have fun. Evaluator, Nick, a very good suggestion about centering your body on stage. It's very important to have your presence when you're up here delivering a message. Uh, any of you seen Obama speak on television? President Obama is one of the best speakers in the world right now. And when you see him talk, he's always centering his body right there so that he's making contact with everybody instead of being on the side, like a waiter or something. Okay, so it's important to have that presence and get used to it. It might be a little nerve-wracking for the first couple of times when you're up here, but after a while you enjoy being up here and you can make eye contact with people much easier. Scene number five, Ina, experienced speaker, textbook perfect, really was. You had good posture, you had good eye contact with people, your speech was very deliberate, it was not slow but very deliberate. You were not rushing it. That was really good. And you, because you did not rush it, you look so calm. You look so in control of yourself. And this is what the judges look for in a speech competition. Often, we don't really care what you have to say. Seriously. We're only interested in how you say it. Really. And the evaluator, Kiki, 
you are a very experienced evaluator, and you also make point-by-point -point evaluation, which is really good. Instead of just saying a whole bunch of stuff that doesn't mean anything. And it was detailed, but not winded. So it was really good. Thank you. And scene number seven, Lawrence. I've seen you in our club before. You are a very good speaker. You have a very good voice. It's very clear. It's very loud. And you had a very good opening, very good conclusion, and also a very good content. I like how you presented your speech. And my suggestion is a bit about language evaluation. You s repeated yourself a lot, like, it's a bit tricky, right? That's my topic, right? Now, that is okay in a conversation, but when you're making a speech, try to say, it's a bit tricky, isn't it? That's my topic, isn't it? It sounds a lot better than right, right? Because when you say right, you're asking for agreement. Yeah. Which you don't need because you are making the speech. You're in control of the speech. Okay, just my suggestion. And Sean, excellent evaluator. You're very experienced in speeches. You already done your C10, right? Right? <laughs> right? Yes. Did you not? Yeah. <laughs> A very humble evaluation. I appreciate that. You praise the speaker. And that's really wonderful. A lot of times we like to pick fault about people to help them improve. But at the same time, you praise people as well. It gives them confidence. And that's appreciated. And humor is always appreciated. It's nice to always add something to it. Table topics. Table topics is a wonderful session because that is the time when you allow people to come up here to express themselves. Table topic is a speech contest. You have two minutes to tell us with opening, a content, and also a conclusion. And just because it's short doesn't mean that it is not a speech. And because if you do that often enough, you need it in real life. When you go up for an interview, you're making a topic, table topic. Because people are going to ask you, how old are you? Are you married? You're going to make a lot of spontaneous answers. And that is applicable in real life. It's really good for all of you. If you get a chance to come up here, do it. Don't be afraid. Okay? Say the first thing that comes to your mind. I think all of the people that came up here did quite well. A couple of people were a little bit shy. A little bit conservative, but that's okay. Next time you'll be better. After two, three times, you want to do it all the time. It's like going to uh, karaoke for the first time. You know, you, oh, oh, I'm not going to sing, I'm not going to sing. But after two, three songs, or after two, three beers, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> And it's like that. Making a speech is also like that. It's addictive. And that's why you will. If you decide to come back to Toastmaster again, you will get addicted. Because when you come up here and you speak, and you know the audience appreciates what you have to say, it is satisfaction. It really is. So table talk is wonderful, and I like how you do it with a format like that, instead of pulling up questions from a hat. It's, it's a nice change. Now, language evaluation, that is a tough task. Your teacher, obviously, is very academic. He's pointing out a lot of things that you can improve on. But what I suggest, being a lot of non-native speakers among us, is to focus on pronunciations. Pronunciation really helps you to become a better speaker. I think a lot of you are afraid to speak in public because you're afraid to make mistakes. You're afraid to say the wrong thing, or you're afraid to say things that people don't understand, and they laugh at you. So pronunciation is something that we can focus on. Now, I heard tonight about section a lot. It's not section, it's session. S-E-S-S-I-N is session. Toastmaster session, table topic session. It's not a section, session, okay? Just want to point that out. Uh, and then uh, quite a few of you are taking, majoring in economy. I think you mean economics. There's no such thing as economy in a course. We call it economics. Am I right? Yeah. yeah. So next time when someone asks you what you major in, not, not economy, economics. Now, do I have the time? How, how am I doing in time?
Two minutes. Okay, great. I want to share with you a little bit about pronunciation because this is really would really help you to uh, get more confidence in your conversation or your speeches. How do you say this word here? Present or present? Right. One word, two meanings. It depends how you pronounce it. I think I've said this before, some of you. Yes, yes. It's so easy. When you have a multiple syllable word like this, this is a two syllable word, if you say present, the accent is on the back, the second syllable. Present, present. And what is it? It's a verb. If you say present, the emphasis, the accent is in the front syllable, present. Then it is because it is a noun. You can apply that to 99% of English words. Like, address, address is a verb, right? Address becomes a noun. What is your email address? Address, address. Another one comes to my mind is, that's right. I like to record. And that's a verb. If I like to say a record. Yeah, I just broke the record. Record is a noun. See how simple it is to differentiate between a noun and a verb? Is by where you put the accent, the emphasis on the syllable. The front or the back. When it's at the back, it's a verb. When it's in the front, it's a noun. It's that simple. And also, when you have a multiple syllable word, don't rush it. Break it down. Do I have one minute? Okay. I'm going to share with you the longest English word. Wow. Yeah, some of you might know this one, eh? Super, Cal, Le, Fred, Joe, Liz, Tick, X, P, A, Le, Do, Shis. That's one word, one English word. One of the longest English words, days. Yes. Now, how do I remember this word? How did I memorize it? I don't. The magic about English spelling is you don't have to memorize all your danzi, right? Vocabularies. Just memorize what it sounds like. Super califragilistic expialidocious. It is a song from a Mary Poppins movie. <laughs> now, how I remember this word is now, ladies and gentlemen, if you go in tonight and try to memorize it, I bet you you can spend all night staying up and try to memorize how to spell this. It won't work. It is impossible. Because when you start half, you'll forget the other half. Okay? So what you do is you break it up. You go super each syllable. Break it up. Super califragilistic expialidocious. Each syllable. Add it together and you get a word. That's the magical part about English. Chinese is very difficult. Chinese is drawing pictures. If you don't know the picture, you don't know the word. In English, all you need to do is memorize what it sounds like. And then you put the syllables together, and you got a word. And there are only 26 letters. And you know them all. So you're a master of your own language. All you need to do is practice to put the syllables, each one by one, and put them together, and you got a word. Forget memorizing vocabularies. Again, just remember what it sounds like. Okay? So, that is the end of my <laughs> <laughs>